Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, we are going to focus on Chord's 12 rules. And this is a set of 13 rules. Is it confusing? No worries, once we step into the topic of the day, you will understand things clearly. Let's step into Chord's 12 rules. Basically, Chord's 12 rules are a set of 13 rules for defining certain requirements. What are the requirements? If a database management system is considered to be a relational database management system, simply RDBMS, then it must satisfy all these 13 rules. In simple terms, there are 13 rules for defining the requirements for a DBMS to be considered to be relational. And these 13 rules are proposed by the English computer scientist Edgar Frank Cord. And this is considered to be the pioneer of the relational model for databases. Cord's 12 rules are also referred as Cord's 12 commandments. Now we need to understand one thing. Then why the name Cord's 12 rules? Though it has 13 rules. Because the rules are numbered from 0 to 12. So a total of 13 rules are there. And the last rule is rule number 12. Because the first rule starts with rule number 0. In simple terms, Cord's 12 rules are a set of 13 rules numbered from 0 to 12. Let's see all the rules one by one now. Basically, it has 13 rules. The rule starts from rule number 0 and it ends with rule number 12. So there are a total of 13 rules. Let's see rule number 0. Rule number 0 is the foundation rule. What do we mean by this? This is the foundation. For any system that is advertised as or claimed to be a relational database management system, that system must be able to manage the databases entirely through its relational capabilities. I already told you in the previous lecture that RDBMS is having a close association with the mathematical concept called relations. So any system that is claimed or advertised to be a relational database management system, simply RDBMS then that system must be able to manage the databases entirely through its relational capabilities. This is rule number 0, the foundation rule. We are done with rule number 0. Let's now move on to rule number 1, which is the information rule. What do we mean by this? It means all information in a relational database is represented explicitly at the logical level and in exactly one way. And that way is by values in the table. In simple term, all the information that we are going to process in RDBMS, it is represented explicitly at the logical level by referring to the values in the table. And this is what rule number one is the information rule. And coming to rule number two, the guaranteed access rule. What do we mean by this? Each and every datum. Datum means it's singular. The plural form of datum is data. So when we say data, it is already in the plural form. Let's come to the definition of the guaranteed access rule. Each and every datum which is already an atomic value in a relational database. I hope you know what is an atomic value. It is indivisible in nature. If you are not sure about the atomic values, I request you to watch my previous lecture where I have explained about atomic values. Let's continue dealing with this definition. Each and every datum which is already an atomic value in a relational database management system is guaranteed to be logically accessible by resorting to a combination of table name, primary key and column name. In simple terms, each and every data that we are going to access in RDBMS, it should be referred through the table name, primary key and the column name. Anyway, we will understand things clearly when we see SQL, where we are going to give some SQL queries which contains the table name, primary key attribute and also the column names. We are done with rule 2. Let's now focus on rule 3, the systematic treatment of null values. If you recall the previous lecture where I have explained about null values, we must understand clearly that null values are not empty character string or a string of blank characters. Even it is not 0 or any other number. These null values are either missing information or inapplicable information and that should be treated in a systematic way by the relational database management system. This is what exactly rule number 3 is. And these null values must be independent of the data type. For example, number data type, the role number should accept null value. Character data type, name should also accept null value. Date of birth data type should also accept null value. And that's why I quoted, 
These null values must be independent of the data type and all these null values must be supported by the relational database management system. This is all about rule number 3. Let's assume there are two different tables. When we join these two tables and produce a new table, when we do that, there are chances for some inapplicable information in the result table, where that result table may not have the exact value what is required while joining the table. These inapplicable or missing information we call as null values. No worries, we will be elaborately understanding about null values when we deal with SQL. And coming to rule number 4, which is dynamic online catalog. What do we mean by this? The database description is also represented at the logical level. So this dynamic online catalog is related to database description and also it deals with the authorization, which users can access what kind of data. And coming to rule number 5, which is the comprehensive data sublanguage rule. A relational system may support several languages and various modes of terminal use. This terminal use means we are going to access the database from a terminal application or a terminal software. And this can be of any type. It may be a GUI application, the graphical user interface, and it can also be like the fill in the blanks mode. Anyway, I am just representing it as a terminal application program or a terminal software or the terminal usage mode. However, there must be at least one language, though we have several languages, there must be at least one language whose statements are expressible with some standard syntax, some character strings and also it should support the following items. The data definition, the DDL, the view definition. I know it will be difficult for you to understand what is a view. Anyway, in the next rule, that is rule number six, I will explain about views. Then data manipulation, integrity constraints, authorization and operations related to transactions. So all these things should be expressible in the statements and there may be multiple languages and there should be at least one language that can support all these. We are done with rule 5. Let's see the view updating rule which is rule 6. See for a table we can create multiple views. Whenever we update any view that should also update the table. Basically all the data are stored in the relations and we can create multiple views for the relation. Both view and relation are referring to the same data item in the same memory location. Both are referring to the same memory. So whenever we make any modifications in the view, it means the relation is also getting modified because both are referring to the same data item. Only thing is all the information are stored in the relation and we are creating multiple views as per the need. So rule number six states that any RDBMS that should support the view updating rule Simply, whenever we update the rule, the table or the relation should also be updated. We are done with rule number 6. Let's now move on to rule number 7. The rule is, it is possible for higher level insert, update and delete. So the name itself says that there should be a possibility for the relational database management system to perform higher level of insertion, updation and deletion operations. What do we mean by higher level? Whenever we want to insert some records or update the records or delete the records, it doesn't mean that we should always go to the database, access the table and perform the operation. Even we should be able to do that from the application program. Whenever we do these operations from the application program or from the client end or the front end. So that should also be supported. It doesn't mean that we should always supply queries to the database to perform the operation. In other words, the capability of handling a base relation or a derived relation as a single operand applies not only to the retrieval of data, but also to the insertion, updation and the deletion of the data. And hence rule number seven is also called as relational operation rule. We should always have the possibility for higher level insert, update and delete operations. No worries, when the course progresses, you will be able to understand rule number seven even more clearer. We are done with rule number 7. Let's now move on to rule number 8, which is physical data independence. We have already seen about this. Generally, any application program or any terminal activities, it should remain logically unimpaired whenever there are changes made in the storage or the access method. Let's take the three tier architecture. We have front end at the top level and database at the low level. Whenever any changes are made in the low level, I mean, whenever we make any changes in the storage representations or access method, 
it should not affect the application program level access. That is what is called as physical data independence. Simply, changes made in the low level data storage representation or the data access methods should not impact the application programs or the terminal activities. And coming to rule number 9, which is logical data independence. In rule number 8, we dealt with the physical aspect, right? Whenever we make changes in the storage, it shouldn't affect the application level access. And coming to this one, where the application programs and terminal activities, it should be logically unimpaired when any modifications are done to the base table. So this is about rule number 9. Coming to rule number 10, the integrity independence. We have already seen about integrity constraints, right? All these integrity constraints that are specific to a particular relational database management system must be definable in the relational data sublanguage and also it should be stored in the catalog. What do we mean by this? It means all the integrity constraints that we are going to enforce on the database should be in the database only. To be precise, it should be in the relational database only but not in the application programs. Say for example, the banking database and let's assume there is a table called account or a relation called account. In this account relation, we have a column called balance and this balance should not be lesser than or equal to zero. Let's assume this is the constraint we are enforcing for this particular relation. This enforcement of integrity constraint should be in the DBMS level, not from the application level. Say we may be writing an application program in Python or Java or C++. The constraint should not be applied there. Rather, it should be applied in the relational database sublanguage or simply relational databases. We are done with rule number 10, the integrity independence. Coming to rule number 11, the distribution independence. When we say data are stored in a single place, maybe in a single server, it is always good to have a backup. Because all systems are subject to failures, it could be a hardware failure or a software failure. Whatsoever, generally a failure. Failure in a system should not be permitted. I personally believe in technology, two is one and one is none. When you have one, it means it is none because there is no redundancy. So we should always have enough backup for all the activities. Let's assume you are having a database. It's always recommended to have another copy of the database somewhere in a distant location because not only hardware and software failures can cause damage to the database. There may be natural disasters like earthquake or hurricane may affect your data center and hence we are required to distribute the data and this distribution of data not only helps us to achieve a duplicate copy of the database and also it protects the data from the natural disasters. Say if one site is affected by the natural disaster, Obviously, the other site will contain the duplicate copy of the database because it is in a remote or a distant location. And this distribution of data should not be known to the end user. Let's assume there are two sites where our databases are stored, site A and site B. Let's assume site A and site B are geographically separated by thousands and thousands of miles. It is always good to have like this. Let's say user is now connected to site A and he is retrieving or accessing all the data from site A. Let's assume site A is encountered with some hardware or software failure or even the natural disaster. So obviously site A cannot give data to the user, the end user. In this scenario, site B comes into action and it starts scattering the need of the user by providing all the data that is required. User must not be able to see that the data is distributed across various locations. User should always get the impression that the data is stored only in one place or in one site and he should not be aware that the data is distributed. This is rule number 11, the distribution independence. And coming to rule number 12, the last rule, the non-subversion rule. What do we mean by this? If a relational system has a low level language, it means we can perform the operations of single record at a time. That is what I represent it as low level language. If a relational system has a low level language, that low level cannot be used to subvert or bypass the integrity rules or the constraints expressed in the higher level relational language. The higher level language, what I mean is multiple records can be accessed at the same time or multiple records can be processed at the same time. So rule number 12 states that if relational database system has a low level language, 
that low level language cannot be used to either subvert or bypass the integrity rules and constraints expressed in the higher level relational language so this is what rule number 12 is all about we are done dealing with all the 13 rules these are the rules that are designed to define what is required from a database management system in order for it to be considered as relational database management system at the bms in simple term COD's 12 rules are designed to define what is required from a DBMS in order for it to be considered a DBMS. And that's it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and thank you for watching.